there, Colleen here at DIYer behind LemonThistle.com and today I am excited to share my favorite three home organization hacks with you all. So earlier this year, I agreed to speak at an online virtual conference that is coming up in September. It is called Get Organized HQ and it is a all about organization, getting your life in order and under control, whether it's uh, meal planning or budgeting or photo organization or checklists. I don't even know. There's so much good stuff in this conference and it is completely free. So today some of the speakers have gotten together and we're all sharing our top three home hacks with you all and uh, so this is mine. I will put the link to the playlist for all of these fave three home organization hacks uh, down below so if you want to hop around and check those out you definitely can. I will also put the link to the Get Organized HQ virtual conference below and it's completely free but you do need to sign up ahead of time. I am teaching about photo organization and specifically getting those into photo books. But yeah, today we're talking all about home organization. Before we get into it, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure that you do that below so you don't miss out on any new DIY or home decor videos. So last year I shared a ton, a ton, or maybe it was earlier this year, a ton of organization and storage ideas with you, some different systems that we use in our house, but it's like, there's a lot in there. So to boil it down to my favorite three and share a little bit more about those, I thought would be really helpful. So that's what I'm doing here today. These aren't necessarily hacks so much as strategies that we use and we have found absolutely so helpful for us in managing our home. So if you don't follow me yet, I have four children, uh, ages right now, eight to four. And so we have school, we have activities, we have all the things going on and you know, a lot of different needs and so much stuff in our home. Um, but I'm also a home decor blogger. I like to keep my home tidy as much as possible and I like to be able to invite people over and not have to be like madly shoving things in the closets. So my first hack or tip is to really utilize drawers and pullouts. And so I know that this is not new, however it has been so helpful for us. So I'm going to share a few different places that we use these really successfully and where they've made the biggest difference for us. The first is of course in kitchen cabinets. So we have uh, kitchen cabinets that are very deep and to reach all the way to the back for a lot of those things, we would never use that stuff. So we have pullouts that you can pull out that bottom shelf and you can reach all the way to the back and get the canister or the can or whatever. And so we are going through our things and not just letting things die in the back of the corner of those kitchen cabinets, those lower ones especially. This isn't as big of a deal with eye level things for me, it's really just the lower things. So those pullouts are purchased and they were installed by a kitchen cabinet company. Uh, this one right here in our kitchen, we added in after the fact. I really wanted to get this coffee maker off of our counter. It only gets used on the days that my husband works and he works a seven on seven off shift and it only gets used before he leaves for work. And then we use the noisy espresso machine all throughout the day. This was a microwave cabinet originally, so it does have a plug-in in there is we pull out the pull-out shelf that we built, we plug it in, we run our coffee, and then after it cools down in the morning we push it back in and it's out of sight, out of mind. We've been using it for a year and a half now and we really love it. It's been a great way for us to get some of these smaller appliances that we do use but not every day, all day, off of our counters. So we have our coffee grinder, our coffee pot, and our blender all in this pull-out shelf that we've added in. I do have a video tutorial if you would like to add one of those yourself. Another place that we use drawers and pull out all the time is in our entryway closet. Now this closet is a super awkward shape. I have a whole video about the closet and how we chose to organize it working with a local closet company who had amazing tips. And one of the things that I've gleaned from them over the years working with them is that drawers are a lifesaver, especially when it comes to kids. And I kind of thought drawers versus shelves, what's the difference? Um, we can put baskets on the shelves, but I will tell you right now, the baskets get dumped out several times a day, several times a day, especially for my youngest kids. But the pull out drawers, so in our, their bedroom, they have some drawers, those don't get dumped out. And in the closet in the uh, entryway, we have pull out baskets and those don't get dumped out either. But what these baskets are extra amazing for is 
for that big bulky school stuff that we know you all have with kids. So we actually went back and added a third one in down the road because we loved them and used them so much. So these ones are 18 inches wide and they're just metal baskets on drawer slides. And we use one of them for backpacks. All four of my kids' backpacks fit in there just stacked in one basket. Another basket is for all of their snow pants in the winter time. In the summer we switch that and we use it for hats. I don't think I could go back to having hooks with bags hung because it just takes up so much more space than this handy pillow drawer where the backpacks just stack flat. And they do leave some library books in there too. And it still works. They're the best. So my tip number two or hack number two is to store things where they are used. And I know that this seems like common sense, but I feel like it's not. I feel like in North America, we have all these weird ideas about where things should be stored and where we should keep things and you know linen closets should have all of our family linens and I've read Design Mom's book years ago like very early on into my motherhood and she talks about this how she stores the sheets in the kids closets for the beds that they're on and I'm like this is genius I've never thought of this those closets they can't reach the top shelves anyways like I only store stuff up there what is even up there and so keeping all of the sheets in the bedrooms to which they belong uh, has cleared up space in our tiny little linen closet for things that we use upstairs but don't have storage for it like board games for us so in the kids' closets, we store their uh, sheets for their beds. We also store their duffel bags for travel because we normally store those in a storage room downstairs, but especially over those summer months where we're traveling every other week. So by putting them just on the top shelf of the closet, it is so easy to just pull it down for the kids when they're ready to pack. And uh, we don't have to go dig in the storage room past the Christmas trees. So that's for the kids' closets, but the other place that we do this is with cleaning supplies. And so I keep all of the cleaning supplies up high as much as possible in our house, just since we have younger children. In the kitchen, I have all of the kitchen cleaning supplies, but I have all of the bathroom ones down in the hallway covered right outside the bathroom. So I can just pull that caddy down and bring it into the bathroom when I'm ready to clean that space instead of storing it all in the kitchen and taking up my kitchen space on things that could really go in the bathroom. Except I don't want to keep them under the bathroom cabinet and I don't have a closet inside the bathroom. If I had a closet inside the bathroom, I'd keep them right in there. But just as a thought to keep things where you use them as opposed to where you've been taught that they go. Because you can make those decisions for yourself and honestly that has been such a big difference for me in how I use my closets and drawers and how I use my home. One more quick example of this is we do keep a drawer in our living room that is specifically for missing game pieces and puzzle pieces and random bits and bobs. And it's not a junk drawer, it's specifically for game pieces and things like that because we play all of our games in the living room. And again, we have four young kids and we have a dog and things get knocked over. So every time we clean the living room, we'll usually find a couple random pieces of light brights or marbles or things like that. And so it all goes in that drawer and then when that drawer is getting full, then we just put everything back where they belong. We'll go through, bring it to the games closet and fill all the games with that. Uh, instead of just shoving it in the games closet to fall out when you pull out another game. It's made a big difference for us in how many puzzle pieces actually get kept and not lost, so. Okay, my third home organization hack or tip is to use the inside of your cupboard doors. So I don't like the look of clutter, uh, but I do. <laughs> like to have stuff, especially stuff that helps organize us. So things like a family calendar, I don't really want on my walls or on my fridge, but I do wanna have it readily accessible where we can all look at it and see what's going on. So we actually use the inside of our kitchen cabinets for this. Uh, we have one that is dedicated to our like landing station or um, launch pad. I know people call it lots of different things, but we have big calendars. I, they're free printable on my blog if you'd like the same ones, but we have those taped the next two months, taped to the inside of the cabinet along with our Wi-Fi password and emergency phone numbers, other things like that. So the inside of that cupboard is dedicated to that. We have pens in there. It's ready to go with everything that we might need. On the kid height cabinet down there, we have information on their allowances and their saving percentages. We've got kind of like a system going on down there, but they can easily check it out and read it whenever they need to. 
We also have their routines and expectations on charts in the hallway closet. So as they're getting ready for school in the morning, they can pop that open, especially the younger one. This really helps and we have it done with words and pictures. So they can pop the closet open and look and be like, yeah, I've brushed my teeth, oh, haven't made my bed and they can go and do that. And it helps them self-manage, but then I don't have charts taped all over my house. Um, we also have that for their chores. In our house, we have responsibilities that uh, they are expected to do just as being part of our house, but they also have like money chores that they can earn extra money for. There's little Ziploc bags that have the coins in there for that. So those are on the inside of our cleaning cupboard. And so if they want to earn some extra money and they've taken care of their responsibilities, we have these all hanging on little hooks. Now you can use the inside of your doors for whatever you want, but honestly having the inside of the doors as an option for these organizational systems that I like to have, whether it's meal planning or whatever it is, has been a huge game changer for me because that all used to be on the fridge, on the counter, or taped to the wall. So those are my three home organization hacks and or tips for you. I hope that you'll hop around and check out these other speakers tips as well. I'll put the link to the playlist down below and don't forget to sign up for the Get Organized HQ virtual conference. It is running from September 12th to 16th and there is 100 speakers, 100 different sessions. You guys, they are so good. Even if you think only one of them will benefit you, it is so worth signing up so that you can get that in your hands. Now, if you are not seeing this video until after the conference has run, you can still get all access passes. And so you can still check out that link below and uh, see what's available to you now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't sit in any more DIY or home decor videos. We'll see you next time.